This video gives a procedure for how to take a total phosphorus sample for the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program, often called the CLMP. The CLMP is a program of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and supported by numerous partners. About 230 Michigan lakes participate in the CLMP every year. My name is Paul Steen and I am Program Manager for MICOR, the umbrella program that manages the CLMP. If you have any questions about MICOR or the CLMP, you can email me at the address shown. Anyone interested in participating in the CLMP must enroll their lake into the program every year. There is a registration fee for every parameter and some of the parameters have equipment costs. You can register online or learn more at the website given here. You may also contact the person listed here for any registration related questions. This video is meant to be supplemental to the written procedures. If you plan to take total phosphorus samples this spring and summer, be sure to review the written procedures prior to starting. All the paperwork you need can be obtained from the MICOR website at the address shown. Look for the section on total phosphorus to find the procedures, data sheets, sampling schedules, and turn-in locations. Phosphorus is an essential nutrient for life. Phosphorus is generally in short supply in freshwater systems, meaning that the rate of plant growth is controlled by the amount of phosphorus available. Human activities tend to introduce excessive phosphorus into lakes and streams, and this can cause algae blooms. Blue-green algae blooms can produce toxins into the water that can sicken or kill people and pets. The decomposition of algae blooms will use up the dissolved oxygen in the water, causing fish kills. Phosphorus is found in a variety of forms in freshwater systems. It is dissolved in the water, in the tissues of dead and living plants and animals, and absorbed to soil particles. To obtain a total phosphorus measurement, all of these materials are digested with acid in the laboratory to free the phosphate molecule, which is then measured as a concentration in terms of micrograms per liter, also called parts per billion. The CLMP provides the opportunity to take two phosphorus measurements every year, one in the spring and one in the late summer. The spring sample is taken after the ice melts off of a lake and the lake is fully mixed. This sample will represent the total amount of phosphorus in the whole lake. The summer phosphorus sample is taken during the late summer after most lakes have formed layers of warm surface water and cold bottom water. This sample represents the top layer only and it controls the summer algae production in the lake. There is no set date for spring phosphorus sampling. The goal is to sample the lake within two weeks after ice has entirely disappeared from the lake surface. Since every lake will have a slightly different date of ice out, it is up to the volunteer to determine this date. Please note that this is a change from past years when CLMP staff attempted to predict the ice out date for the lakes. However, lake residents are best suited for determining ice out for their lake, and this programmatic change will result in samples that more accurately reflect spring turnover conditions. The summer phosphorus sample needs to be taken in August or September, with the date range depending on the county in which your lake is located. These dates are listed on the summer phosphorus schedule. Every lake that registers in the CLMP is given a number that represents the sampling location for that lake. This number, called the field ID number, is associated with the latitude and longitude of the deepest location in the lake. All of the sampling done on this lake should be conducted at this location. When you are ready to take a measurement, head out on your boat to the sample point. Because the boat can disturb the water, it is best to turn off the engine and drop anchor upwind of the sample location and then drift to the proper location. On calm days, coast into the proper location and then wait several minutes for the water to settle. Prior to sampling, fill out the two sample labels as shown and attach the labels to the bottles. 
You must use a permanent black marker to do this because water soluble ink will run when it gets wet. In the box for parameter code, write GA. On the second label, write REP in the location box, indicating that this is for the replicate sample. All volunteers will take two water samples. Using only the sample bottles provided, remove the cap of one bottle, being careful not to touch or contaminate the inside of the bottle cap or bottle. Grab the bottle at the bottom and rinse twice. No dust or dirt particles should be in the bottle, but just in case, rinsing the bottle removes anything that may have gotten into it. To fill the bottle, lower the bottle with the opening pointed down to a one or two foot depth, a little longer than the length of your forearm. Once the bottle is underwater at the proper depth, rotate it upwards to release the trapped air and allow water to enter. Repeat this sampling procedure with a second bottle to obtain a replicate sample. Pour some water out of the bottle to avoid cracking the bottle when you freeze the water sample. Put the bottles in a baggie and place them in a cooler bag with a freezer ice pack. As soon as you return to shore, put the water samples in the freezer and leave them there until it is time to turn the samples in. All samples must be turned in frozen or they will be rejected. Be sure to completely fill out your data form. Use a black permanent marker or a pencil. On the back of the data form, draw an outline of the lake and indicate monitoring station and maximum depth. On the bottom, there are boxes to indicate whether you enter the phosphorus sampling information into the CLMP online database or if that information was not entered. Please check the appropriate box. No matter which box you check, Put your filled out data sheet into a baggie and place it into the larger bag with your frozen samples prior to turning in your sample. The online database where all the CLMP data is stored is called the MyCore Data Exchange. This database allows you to enter your data, view the data from your lake, and see the data from all of the other lakes who have ever been enrolled in the CLMP. The MyCore Data Exchange can be found on the MyCore website. You may be wondering what data you could enter into the database for a phosphorus sample, since your water sample needs to be analyzed by the DEQ Water Lab before you learn the phosphorus results. However, the sampling information on your data sheet, like the field ID number, the sample date, and lake name, all need to get entered into the data exchange. Once the lab has analyzed your sample, CLMP staff will match the sampling information to the lab results and it will all be viewable on the data exchange. To enter your lake data, contact the person listed here for a username and password. It is very easy to enter your own data. You will fill out boxes in a manner that is about the same as purchasing something off of an internet website. By choosing to enter your own data, you can save the CLMP a lot of staff time and help keep lake registration costs down. Each lake is assigned to a sample drop-off location depending on the county in which the lake is located. There are two turn-in dates for phosphorus, one for the spring phosphorus sample and another for the summer phosphorus sample. Refer to the phosphorus schedules to get your assigned drop-off location and dates. All samples must be turned in frozen, include the data form, and arrive prior to noon on the assigned date. At the end of the year, you will receive a data report that gives your phosphorus results and the long-term trends of your lake. This data is valuable in showing both you, other lake residents, and the Michigan DEQ if there are ongoing threats to the lake's water quality. Thanks for watching, and we hope this video was helpful for reminding you how to take total phosphorus samples in the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program.